everybody and welcome back to Immigration Nation. My name is Klein. I'll be your host today and I'm with Miss Zoe Zhang Lui and we are just going to go over a couple things in the immigration realm but obviously she will be able to explain it better than I can. So with that, Zoe, if you'll just take it away and give us a little information about yourself, about your firm and take it away. Yeah, hi everybody. Um, when I, I first came here, um, my, my dad first came here uh, when I was only three years old. Um, I came here um, roughly at, at 10 years old with my mom, um, just, you know, had like, with nothing but a little suitcase um, with me. And like um, my, my dad came over to me for the first time I saw him like six, seven years later. He was in this like like torn up clothing like his his um clothing would be stained because he just came out from his restaurant work he, he's, he was um you know that's how my family in, in restaurants and when i saw him that was like my resolve is like you know to work so that he doesn't have to work in a restaurant anymore and then a little bit later on i found out that you know he still didn't he was waiting for immigration status for like 20 years um after i started law school um i went into law school with that resolve is that, you know, so that they don't have to work in restaurants anymore. But then my second, the reason I went to immigration law was because his his status um, was held by USCIS for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So um, finally I learned immigration law to be able to call for him. And he's been, a, he was US citizen. He got his US citizenship a few years ago. So- um, Oh, congratulations. That's so, so awesome. That's, that's the reason, yeah. So um, I started my farm um, in, uh, end of uh, 2015 um, and in 2016, you know, um, I, start, um, I sort of just by myself, you think of like your entrepreneur startup. I was in, I had like this room in my house that I was, you know, just working on um, learning all the aspects of immigration. Uh, 2017 was when it uh, really kicked off with um, a, a seminar in Cambridge um, and I, I was I got uh, connected with the public health um, community, um, and uh, later in um, from then until now, you know that's what I've been. Um, my specialty is uh, EB two national interest waiver applications and just self petitions in general. Those who want to work for themselves, the freedom of you know not being not being tied to an employer, and it's just expanded from there. Um, a lot of my clients are I have a global. Um, clientele. Um, a lot of them are from Nigeria that work with the USAID and CDC um, and they're coming here, you know, to continue their research in the same area um, or um, in universities. Um, and then I also, you know, since then I've also expanded, you know, to help entrepreneurs that are wanting to start their own business here. Um, I'll see you name it, the industries I've worked with, um, dentists, uh, accountants, um, um, let's see, oh, um, solar, solar panel installation specialist uh, technicians, wind power technicians, uh, software app creators. So, um, you know, I help them come here and start their business. They're able to do whatever they want. They don't have to be tied to an employer um, and they're able to, you know, give their family and their kids um, access to better schools and create a better life for their family. So let's get into what exactly this visa is. We're talking about EB2s today and specifically the EB2 NIW. What is this national interest waiver? What is an EB2 visa and who does it apply to? What is the target audience for it? So the EB2 national interest waiver is for um, your really um, anybody who um, the, your students, your um, academics, people who, uh, you know, just self-starters. Right, um, individuals who um, do not want to work for an employer or an employer uh, process, employee based employment based process traditionally would take too long for them. Um, um, even, and one question I often get is, um, hey, I don't have any publications. Would I qualify? And the quick answer is, yeah, you definitely do. Um, you know, let's um, we'll talk about it. Um, you know, we can strategize a case for, um, you know, you can start your own business, you invest your own business, you create jobs for the U.S. And that's 
a way to get the national interest waiver of the job offer requirement. And that's the formal name. It's um, EP2 category with national interest waiver of the job offer requirement because you do not have to have an employer to sponsor you. Wow, that's so nice. And we were discussing before we started filming, um, one of those pathways through an employer, I think you mentioned it took up to two years to even qualify for, for some of that paperwork. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So through a traditional employer-based um, sponsorship process, you first have to go through the Department of Labor um, to get a prevailing wage determination. And of course, anytime you work with a government agency, the time can be dramatically lengthened, right? So um, that's the additional step. Um, so after that, you have to do um, the recruitment based on um, the regulations that are outlined. So that can take another two months. Um, and then you would submit for the um, labor certification. You tell Essentially, you assert to Department of Labor, hey, you know, we did the recruitments that you guys required and we're not able to find someone that are qualified to do this job. Um, so now, you know, th then we get into another uh, wait period for the Department of Labor to certify that. And in that during that time frame, they could also audit you to make sure that you that you, the employer, did all those uh, steps to um, to to determine that you couldn't find someone. Um, and then. That's at that point, that's when you can file the I-140 um, petition for a um, <clears throat> for, for an immigrant visa. Um, but through the national interest waiver way, um, if you qualify, you skip through all of that wow. the labor process. You just jump right to the I-140 filing. You know, there's some extensive preparations that we would do, you know, to make sure that you qualify, but instead of waiting for an agency, it depends on the law firm and the client. And um, we we do that in three, three four months and your, your papers, your, um, all your documents will be ready to go. Wow, that is so helpful. And um, how would these people know if they qualify? Is there like a certain like specific set or is it case by case basis? So the threshold qualification, um, EB2 preference category, uh, you have to have either um, a master's degree, an advanced degree or higher. Um, or you can also show that through bachelor's degree plus five years of um, of work experience. And that's um, U.S. equivalent. So if you have a foreign degree, we can submit for an equivalency certificate to uh, to get that answer to, to see whether you have a degree that's equivalent to a U.S. master's or higher or a bachelor's mm -hmm. degree and um, plus your five years of progressive work. And if you don't have um, either of those, you can also show through what's called exceptional ability. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a much lower standard than the EB1A extraordinary uh, um, extraordinary ability standard. It's um, outlined in the qualifications. Well, that's interesting. Gotcha. So moving on, what are some advantages and disadvantages of this particular visa? So um, one particular um, advantage, as we've mentioned, is the speed, right, mm -hmm. that you can get um, into you know, you can qualify for a green card uh, much faster. Mm -hmm. um, the second advantage is the creativity that goes into creating one of these cases, working with a good lawyer, an experienced lawyer, you know, someone who, um, I mean, we've done um, so many cases where someone would just, um, they, you know, it could be like a mechanical engineer who um, doesn't really have any publications. Um, you could start a business and, you know, we show your background work, your contracts that you've worked on, and we've been able to get approvals that way. Gotcha. Um, disadvantage, um, it's even after we submit it, there's still a really, really long wait time currently. Mm -hmm. um, they are very backlogged. Um, as of earlier this year, USCIS started accepting premium processing for national interest waiver um, based cases. So um, I would say it, right now the wait is probably around two years. We still don't have an accurate um, prediction of between your I-140 filing and then you have to file your adjustment of status, which is now, you know, dependent on the visa bulletin. So we don't really know when um, some of my clients can file that second step. So my advice is to get started um, on your national interest waiver application as soon as possible and get that, you know, get a priority date and then you are in the queue to wait for your for visa availability. Yeah. I mean, when is USCIS not backed up? Let's be honest. 
<laughs> um, yeah. Well, um, traditionally, from what I do, they could submit that, that step one and step two at the same time. But they they think they, they thought they were doing a good job, you know, by yeah. accepting premium processing. It's like, oh, by the way, we can get these people visas much faster. Right. But now, of course, more people are applying through that national interest way because it's so beneficial. And now this particular category is absolutely not yeah. before it was not. Right. So you're seeing probably about like a, a two year to to what type of time frame are we looking at for this for this waiver? For the final like completion from the start until they get their green card, I, I would say probably two years. Gotcha. But at least, you know, we can get it prepared in and get it possibly approved um, in like within six months and you know, okay, I'm in the wait for the green card because adjustment of status is is going to be much, much simpler mm -hmm. process. Than, Absolutely. Than well, if you think about it in in general, it's a much faster pathway than a lot of other immigration routes. But I know not obviously not everyone qualifies for this quicker path to a green card. But um, do you have any success stories that you like to share? Something that's, you know, that you're super proud of maybe for your firm or just maybe your favorite client success stories over the years? So um yeah, we have so many. I mean, I'm so proud of, you know, um, uh, most of my clients work. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I would say the the ones that I like stick in my mind are, you know, the entrepreneurs that come in. Like um, when I mentioned that third category of exceptional ability, if you don't qualify, if you don't have an advanced degree and you don't have a bachelor's degree, we go into that third um, analysis. Right. So um, I had like one of my first clients. Um, she ended up after we looked into it, she it never got to receive her bachelor's degree because of various hardships in life. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but she, somehow she taught herself to, um, to create a, an app that teaches foreign exchange, um, how to trade foreign exchange on, on this, in the market. Okay. So um, her, um, she had like church communities, like homeless shelters, you know, adopting her, like, um, like pushing her, her app, through to you know other people and um there was this homeless guy that like wrote a blog and was like yeah I'm able to like you know provide myself income using this app oh. and so yeah so someone without a bachelor's degree um you know at that caliber like that's just just goes to show um that's it's uh, one of my proud uh, success stories and just overall I mean um you know something that we are super proud of um is that we as of today we still have a hundred percent um approval rate um you know for eight years in in, in business I know I, I that's I, incredible I keep, I, I keep knocking on wood you know I'm like <laughs> I can't, I can't talk about this too much because I I'm so superstitious too. No, you knock on wood all you need, but that is incredible. Thank you. And um, I just have one more question for you, but I mean, that, that story is incredible. I was just wondering if you are proud of any particular accomplishment that you as a lawyer, as an immigration lawyer have accomplished for your firm over the years do you have any story that like stands out or maybe like a business practice that you're super proud of that has really come to aid in the success of your firm yeah absolutely so that um that 100 percent you know approval rate of course we've you know we, um has i've expanded um over the years whereas before it would just be me you know working on production um pushing cases out, doing the the whole um, analysis and everything. But now I, I have a team um, of um, my uh, remote uh, assistants that are working um, with me and having a whole process of, you know, um, client. When a client starts working with us, we work on the checklist together. And then we draft the support letters. We do, um, you know, the forms. Um, and then, you know, finally, like the legal analysis thing. And the fact that, you know, we have a whole process of um, efficiency, we're able to serve a greater number of clients, sometimes harder, more of these types of cases where someone comes in without any type of background with maybe just, you know, one or two things like um, we've had cases with um, wind power technician, solar panel installation specialists that just really smooth sailing, um, even though they've just only worked for companies themselves, right, to do that job. And, you know, with my team, I've been able to just maintain this approval rate. So that's something that I'm super proud of 
That's incredible. Yeah. I feel like it, no one really talks about the expansion of a business really it, and how much work goes into it and creating those processes to be able to accommodate more people. We're it's something that is very difficult to overcome and it's and it's incredible that you've been able to like be the head of that process. Um and and to keep that 100% approval rating too. That's like almost unheard of. It's really impressive. Just just in the national interest waiver sphere. So yeah, like yeah. You, you want, yeah. So just sort of clarified that. Yeah. So that's why I'm here to talk <laughs> it's still about so that. So impressive. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, now wait, now now. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you set like some goals for 2024 and all that? Yeah. Um, I would like to hire an associate. Like that's that's where I'm getting caught right now with um, you know, my time and then but then, you know, gotcha. being able to bring in enough clients to to pay for that associate is my second. Like I have I have a really good process in place now with my staff. Like I had to work on that first, um, my staff members to have an right. efficient process so that I can make the associates time worth it, you know, and, and have that um because I don't want her to be working on administrative stuff and wasting right. her time on that. So then now next step is hiring that and and I can open up more time to do podcasts like this to you know have a constant flow of clients. Right. Well thank you so much for for joining us today and your story is is very powerful. Thank you for sharing it with with me. Thank you. Thank you for, for having me. This podcast has been prepared for general information purposes only and is not legal advice. This information is not intended to create and receipt of it does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. 